Good morning. It's the first session. Give me some love. Okay, so uh, I'm glad to be over here today presenting uh, uh, Understanding Millennials and Conquering the Crowd. Uh, I think during this keynote, the objective is to share our insights onto the research which we had adapted to understand this crowd and the kind of transformation that happened at the content end, at the tech end, at the product end, and finally also at community level. And uh, I think it gave us some great numbers, but uh, something which I'd like to emphasize is more on research and uh, 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 communities. So moving forward, let's quickly look at digital India landscape. In terms of revenue, there are different estimations, but I'm using a report from last year. Uh, the digital ad pie is poised to increase to 51,000 crores in uh, 2024-25. And it's, India is the fifth largest GDP, poised to increase to the third largest by 2027. The add to GDP ratio is less than 0.5, which gives you a great headroom to grow. But what is more important is understanding the spent by format, and you'll see that the share of display banners is less than 15%, and perhaps is shrinking as well. And there are new advertising formats which are coming up, keeping the millennial consumption in mind. Uh, in terms of scale and diversity, uh, I think uh, India currently has more than uh, 750 million internet users. 65% uh, of the population is under 35. 43% is female, and this number was less than 30% five years back. Uh, nine out of two, 10 new internet users will consume in language. 89% uh, of consumption happens on mobile phones. So India is a mobile first country, and that's what makes us uh, very, very different. And two out of five new urban uh, users uh, uh, will be uh, uh, aged between 50 and 55 are Gen Zs. Right, so, so with this whole scale in mind, uh, how do we reimagine our products? Uh, the three pillars for new age uh, digital publishers are content, technology, and policy. When we talk about content, the audience science and behavior. Who is your audience? How do they consume? Why do they consume you? Uh, product segmentation, I think we've talked about that uh, uh, one product does not suit everything, every storytelling, every narrative formation. So what is product segmentation? And then finally, in this era of digital age, a commitment to factual and credible content pipeline, which is equal to trust. When we talk about technology in terms of user experience, the discovery engagement and monetization, especially keeping cookie deprecation in mind, which is a big challenge for everyone. Privacy, safety, security, the whole uh, 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 a wireframe which has been drawn by the government, by the bodies around privacy, safety, and security. And finally, policy in terms of government, partner platforms, community, internal. And amongst all of this maze, the next thing is that internet in these last 30 years has changed rapidly. We are moving away or from web 1.0 ecosystem and jumping straight into a 3.0, which is more interactive, powered by new age technologies of AIML and beyond. So how does it shape our decision making. So now, let's move into the behavior insights first. Uh, understanding millennials. Now, when we talk about millennials in Gen Z stats in India, 7.9 billion is the world population, of which 1.8 billion is the world of Gen Z population. In India, out of the 1.4 billion population, 350 plus billions are Gen Z, or 20% of Gen Z population, right? If you look at the stat over here, then, Compared to the world average, India today has more than 47% of its population between Gen Z and millennials, right? Compared to a world average of just uh, uh, 47, and uh, sorry, 52% against 47. And uh, this is going to change. We are getting younger with every year that is passing by. Uh, so how do we reimagine our brands, our narratives, and storytelling for this uh, 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 per, uh, cohort. In terms of characteristics and internet consumption, I think everyone knows that they are consuming more on social, about 25% share, entertainment, 
many other things. But what is so different about them is that they want to contribute, they want to, they are very, very sensitive to ESG, they want to contribute, they want, want more value, they want more short side or bite side contents, which we have been talking about. And it's not just that this whole cohort is like how the social media portrays them, that they're just fun loving and that's about it. No, they're very, very serious about different things. But in terms of media, how do we take out those insights? And there'll be many, many research reports you would have gone through it. But for us, the five important things were short form video, interactive and immersive experience, personalized content experience, user-generated content integration, because as I said, I think this is a very, very important pillar that they want to contribute. So how do you make them a part of the whole value system? And purpose-driven brand narratives. I think of late, everyone would have heard about purpose. A lot of talk, all of us, be, uh, be Gen X, Gen Z, Gen Y, everyone is talking about purpose. And it's the age when you want to move away from content commoditization to purpose-driven communities. So how do you introduce purpose to your brands? Uh, the key challenges. So um, it's easier to get these insights, a lot of pain is involved, but uh, you can get them. But when it comes to actual implementation of model, then how, as a company, can you create differentiated content pipelines in this era powered by uh, influencers, experts, uh, or the creator economy. How do you differentiate yourself in terms of content? Uh, product segmentation and experience. So I think a lot of money, tech, innovation, research is going on into creating next level of product technology. So how do you segment your products? Uh, how do you take care of the diverse discovery and amplification platform? So I think India as a country, uh, for most of the publishers, roughly about 30% of the traffic is direct, and 70% dependency is on third-party platforms like uh, search, social, and other audience aggregation network. So when you have so many different platforms, how do you make sure that you are able to connect to these new audiences and make them uh, uh, experience your content? How do you co-create or in introducing or invoking a sense of purpose, UGC, active communities, and then finally, how do you build your brand by increasing the trust uh, and uh, credibility? So, so as we move forward, I think for us, the core business proposition was build scale, drive impact, and make sustainable. And the key questions were use of platforms and technology to scale audience, advertiser, authoritative voices, drive impact. So I think everyone talks about uh, engineering matrices like page views or video views or time spent, but the real question is, what is the impact of content and technology on progressive society, business environment, or digital ecosystem? And finally, make sustainable. The sum of all effort is that your organization and work culture should be sustainable, progressive. For us, I think we take a lot of pride in building sustainability, because if you don't do it now, it would never happen. Understanding content. So for us, the guiding uh, point or the purpose statement to align the team was the, our vision statement, which is to produce factual and credible content that empowers and enables and empowers New Bharat through knowledge, information, and point of view towards an inclusive and progressive society. I think this is that fundamental ground where we were trying to align with this 55 or 60% of the population and help them to navigate towards the new India, the promise it holds, and how do you unlock. In terms of content differentiator, uh, the, the, the core process was that uh, different content, different audiences consume content differently. Uh, generic versus specialist. So we have a lot of authors, and some of these authors, they start their day by breaking our news and then developing news or health or lifestyle, and it keeps on mis mixing. For some finer categories, it separates out. But in this real age, how can you establish this line between generic and a specialist. Scale versus impact. What is the purpose of content? Do you want to use catchy headlines to just get audience hooked once and get, discover you as a sensation? Or you want to really create an impact? And then finally, different formats or technology for better engagement and share of mind. Now, if these are the findings and factual credible empowerment is your uh, three operating pillar, how do you introduce into a product or co content strategy. 
So we decided that for core content, uh, I think when we talk about relevance, can we do a research to understand this cohort more and understand why do people un uh, consume content? For factual, uh, how do you enable, empower the editorial teams to do more of research on the subject? For credible, how do you involve specialists? How do you involve these uh, specialists to validate? So if there is an accident which has happened, can you involve the police traffic uh, police to, to, for example, to validate the whole thing? Interactive, uh, community, uh, online and offline engagement of audience, and we'll talk more about this. I think this is a real game changer. And finally, experience in terms of immersive treatment, packaging, style, tonality, emotion. What is the energy the content invokes in you when you are going through that narrative? I think um, that's again something very important. So, so uh, moving forward, and we said that uh, if purpose, experience, and communities are the building block of new age content companies, then how do you create this whole, uh, uh, get this science into content creation, and also keep in mind uh, something which Google started, and it's a brilliant model called WAT. For people familiar with uh, uh, the, the way search works and the way algorithms are designed, I think this is where the algorithms are changing around this whole concept of WAT, which is experience, expertise, trustworthiness, and authority. And it's important to align or get SOPs around this into your content organization because otherwise you'll not be able to rank on authority. So now moving on to research, and uh, we realized that uh, uh, when we got a research done that there are 20 content genres which most of the companies concentrate on, like starting from politics, international city, going to food and recipes and astrology. But what is more important is the needscapes, and there are these needscapes which define the purpose of consuming content. For example, widens thinking and aids evolution, looks smarter in social group, personality development and confidence and so on. So, so during a day, a person, depending upon the mood uh, or the need, the choices will arrive more out of the need and the genres will keep on shifting. And this is something very important to understand and internalize within the content stream. Uh, if we, uh, taking it forward, we, we, we moved into these five pillars after the research that authenticity and transparency, content that showcases genuine experiences, visual interactive content, user-generated content, personalization, social responsibility. And then uh, after this, uh, what we, another thing which we realized over the period was that uh, uh, how do you protect yourself against volume? Because uh, if you have to produce content at mass for different audience segments, is there a way you can plan it better? And we realize that, uh, um, can we start with an annual calendar? Then there's a team for trending. There's a team which is working during the night shift. What is your hero content pipeline which inspires and aspires people? Uh, content specialists, how do you use them? In terms of building block, every narrative which is coming out, once the uh, narrative is ready, how do you support it with rich experience, a multi-format in terms of graphics, videos, animation, and then finally interactive community and most importantly, a quality check. Every piece of content which is coming out, how do you ensure that it passes your uh, quality check? Uh, finally, as a building block, I think in this age of uh, AI and ML, it is very, very important to help the organizations uh, enhance efficiencies or effectivity or experiential. So how do you use AI ML amongst these three building blocks? And when we came out with our own use cases, and equipped with this knowledge, when we began our journey, so, so we realized that it is also important that as a, 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 a company, how do you change the overall team layer within the organization. So I think out of the 750 members we have, 43% are female, 47 are Gen Zs, and how do you keep on equipping them with this knowledge, tool, and experience? So based on the research, we divided our product into uh, seven primary cohorts, and which is news, education, entertainment, gaming, women, health, fact check, and crime. Within these, we realized that the Gen Z and Gen Alpha, they like short format and quick navigation. So we launched a new product called Jagran Fatafat. For local community, we launched Jagran Local. 
index expansion because nine out of 10 new users are gonna consume in language. So how do we expand into new languages like Tamil, Jagra, uh, or Gujarati? Uh, for Gen Alpha and Millennials, they like more of interactive, contextual-based discovery. So how do you use AI ML bots or uh, some other tools to engage more? And finally, in-depth articles. So what are the properties where you can use in-depth articles? So through those seven cohorts, we expanded into 16 more products. So we started from just being a Hindi news website, and today we have more than 16 products and growing. And uh, uh, look at Jagran Fatafat, which enables focus on bite-sized content. And it's more like card-like. It, it's like short news consumption, and uh, especially very popular amongst millennials who just want to understand what's happening in a, a, a quick way in India. We, we introduced very interactive search uh, uh, features in terms of a voice and bot, which increases interactive, uh, interactivity, helps you with content discovery across a website, and all in-house development. Uh, we, we came out with some very innovative storytelling, and I think this is something I'm really proud of in terms of experience. Now, imagine very light pages, and I just pressed it, and how interactive the stories are, the way they are assembling, uh, audio interviews uh, or infographics uh, and stuff like that, uh, right? So these are the kind of experiences which we will have to invest into uh, to, to engage our audiences better. So it, now it looks easy, but a lot of time was invested into creating that wireframe to enable this change, right? Um, then moving forward, we realized that uh, uh, a video first strategy. So producing video is easy, but discovering a uh, discovery of video content across website is is more difficult. So so the whole transition from a HTML5 technology to now a uh, 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 Java-based technology, which is uh, uh, enabled automated video templates and many of these new features which we have uh, uh, talked about. In terms of audio strategies, we introduced podcasts. There is a global trend that 18 to 29 years are the largest group of weekly podcasts. We came out with a lot of different shows. Keep on experimenting, right? And, and today we have more than 8.5 lakh lessons per month, and we produce about seven episodes in a day. We committed to fact-checking. In fact, we were one of the first uh, Hindi-based fact-check websites within India and one of the first 30 globally. We, we got certified through IFC, an international fact-checking network, and ensured that every piece of content which is going out is more credible. We also needed to diversify the revenue streams because traditionally we were all, most of the companies are only concentrating around ad, or ad monetization and now into subscription, but we diversified into syndication, production house, uh, keeping in mind the behavior of this new audience, right? Uh, um, and in terms of platform mix, so, so, so while you saw, uh, 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 there is a lot of direct consumption which is happening, but today uh, Gen Z is also consuming or spending a lot of time on social platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and today on uh, Facebook alone, uh, we have more than 26 million followers on YouTube. We are producing about uh, more than 87 million video views, 10 million followers, WhatsApp as an engagement co-create, uh, invoking a sense of purpose, uh, UGC, active communities. So uh, I think we, we tried this experiment where we said we can't possibly get everyone into the team. So can we, uh, uh, can we collaborate with these influencers and specialists? And during the last year, we were able to collaborate with 630 specialists and influencers across the categories of finance, tech, auto, health, fashion, lifestyle, education. And these are those people who got very, very special content and engagement onto our platforms. And we, we launched, uh, basis this collaboration, we launched some new programs like Living with uh, Pride, Good Mother uh, Project, which were very, very appreciated by the audiences. Uh, um, and then finally, we, we uh, uh, took the UGC route in a very different way, and we launched this uh, uh, program, Azad Bharat, Azad Nari, and I'll just uh, play a small video to give you a feel. And the whole objective over here was, can we ask people or our community to share content, real-life stories with us? So uh, I think we got a very, very overwhelming response. And real-life stories is something which is really, really prevalent for this new cohort. 
And uh, uh, moving forward, I think we did launch career counseling sections for uh, youth. We launched a video with real people that resonates with their audience. For example, uh, 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 Vinita Singh, who is a, uh, a very known personality, she helped us with a lot of motivational content uh, for a specific cohort or around uh, cosmetics, around different genres, as I said. So, so I think moving away from just the typical route of celebrity in those content, to specialists in those content or specialist created content. I think that yeah. gave us a real yeah. edge to get accepted in the market. We diversified from news also into high tech. And uh, today we have more than 1 million subscribers around tech and auto community. A lot of launches, a lot of brands are coming to us first for their launch, especially across Hindi heartland. And the whole objective why I'm saying this is because our our go-to market statement is that we understand our audience very well, and uh, that is how uh, we know them and we can help your brands penetrate. Uh, we also co uh, converted some of our communities into very strong brand IPs like Health Care Hero Awards or uh, Women Entrepreneur Awards or Education Summit, High Tech Awards, Naya Bharat, and uh, around Fact Check. And finally, I would say that the sum of everything is that today, at a group level, on our own websites, 53% of our audience is millennials and Gen Z. And uh, with Jagran Josh, which is our education website, 66% of our audience is millennials and Gen Z. Look at the power of expansion into languages and different products. And today, uh, a group which was primarily originating from UP, uh, we are able to create a position amongst the top 10 across the 16 reported states by Comscore. And uh, each of our product is standing uh, amongst the top 10 across most of the states. So I think uh, uh, with 77 million users, 90 million video views, today we are not only amongst the top 10 state news publishers, we are ranked seventh within the India and 35th among the global news and information player. So I think that is the kind of impact which we wanted to create and um, the time is almost up. So one very quick thing, I think top level India challenges and opportunities, while we know that 720 million internet users, it's just 50% penetration, uh, uh, so there's more to come. 65% is under 35. India is becoming, heading towards becoming from largest population in the world to the youngest, the largest, youngest population in the world. How does it change your business modeling? R2 GDP ratio is 0.5. As I said, it spells great opportunity. Uh, the caution is VUCA environment. Uh, uh, I think nothing is permanent now. We have all gone through pandemic. And now even more, once the pandemic is over, now the disruption of technology is there. Uh, the, a lot of policies and regulations and things will keep on changing, uh, cookie deprecation, young audience behavior, internet and content framework, DMP. I don't know how many of you have your own DMPs, but you have to own your own data. And finally, the whole technological revolution uh, and the impact of uh, on human condition by Web 3.0. Web 3.0 is semantic, it is experiential, it is intelligent. How do you integrate this into your product and uh, technology uh, wireframe, I think? Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for listening to me.